What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope you have enjoyed this small cinematic intro. All of this has been shooted by using the new Beta FPV 95X version 3 and this naked camera is the ASMO 4K. And today we're gonna talk about this combo. First of all, I want to thank the team of Beta FPV for sending me this drone and this camera for a review. Thank you guys, I really appreciate it. It's two different package. I don't know if you can find a shop where you can buy both at the same time in one package. But for now, you can buy the drone, the camera, or both of them on the Better FPV website or some other shop in your country. But yeah, it's two different packages. It's not just uh, if you buy the drone, you're not gonna have the camera. You need to buy them separately. Let's see what's inside the drone box and let's talk also about the drone itself in general after the unboxing. When you open the box you're gonna directly see the drone, the Beta 95X version 3. Mine is the HD version because I'm using the DJI FPV system. So my version is running the Cadix Vista with the Nebula Nano FPV camera. Quick disclaimer, I changed the camera like I did on my 95X version 2 because you know, you know what I think about the Nebula Nano. But this time it's a new one from Cadix and guys wow it's crazy we're gonna talk about it after after that one spare of GameFan D63 5 blades props one 20 millimeters FPV camera mount in case you want to change the FPV camera like I did one spare of EVA foam tape it's in case you want to change this foam around the drone these are really great to protect the the frame one usb adapter board for fc because even if it's a bnf you need to connect it to betaflight to check your settings to set your remote controller so this is made for connect your drone to betaflight then you have one type c right angle adapter to update your cadix vista because you need to do this when you receive the drone and you have also one adapter cable for customized naked camera that means for the naked gopro and this is really really great thanks beta fpv for this because this cable is really important and really great if you have a naked gopro because you don't have to remove the actual cable on the drone which is made for the smo 4k but with this you just need to plug this adapter on this cable and then connect it to a naked gopro so it's perfect because it saves you a lot of time and maybe some of you already have a naked gopro so this is really great from beta fpv to have included this uh, adapter inside the package and that's all you got inside the drone package. I'm a little bit sad that they didn't include the TPU mount for the naked GoPro or the Insta360 Go like they did on the 95X version 2 box. Now you don't have those TPU mounts. You can still find the STL files on the Beta FPV website and print by yourself the mount for the naked GoPro and the Insta360 Go but yeah I would love to have this included with the drone because some of you guys maybe just want to buy the drone not the SMO 4K and yeah it can be great to have those TPU mount included like on the V2. Let's talk about the drone, the frame and what they changed compared to the V2 and to be honest wow it's so much better guys. The frame design is completely different in a good way. Everything is better finished. The cables are no longer visible. Everything is much more protected and this is something really really nice. This drone doesn't look like an homemade drone now. It really looks like a drone that you can buy in some big shops like a Mavic for example. You can buy a Mavic almost everywhere. It's crazy beautiful and even if you need to um, remove something inside it's really easy to have access to everything and by the way now there is no more two different boards like the FC and the ESC now you have only one board for everything which is so much better the motors are plug and play the crossfire also is plug and play which is something insane the new design is so so much better and there is some changes that I really really love for example the place where you put the battery now it's so much better because before when you wanted to put the new strap for your battery it was a mess you needed to go inside the frame and it was really hard to put it correctly but now phew, it's so much easier also for the camera if you want to change from the smo 4k and then you want to switch to the naked gopro the insta 360 go it's so much easier now you have only one screw in the middle and you can remove it really easily and change the camera really fast for the batteries i use the same as my 95x version 2 which is the 650 mah from tattoo and also the 450 from Bell fpv but i use mostly the 650 the flight time is way more longer i 
I can fly like three minutes, four minutes if I'm just cruising. With the 450, I can fly two minutes, around two minutes. So yeah, I'm using mostly the 650. Let's talk about my flight experience. It was perfect. I have nothing to complain about it. The factory tune are perfect. I changed nothing except my rates. I put my rates on it. The five blade props are really less noisy than on the V2. You get the three blades props on the V2, but those five blades props are really much better in terms of noise. They changed the motors. Now you have 3,000 800 kV motors which is more powerful than the V2 who was 4500 kV so it's really great to have a little bit more power if you want to make a quick move or things like that it's really great now the FPV camera which is this one the one who give you the image you're gonna see inside your goggles and I changed it I already talked about the Nebula Nano in my 95x v2 review and you know what I think about it but this time I changed it for the Nebula Pro I want to thank Cadix for sending me this camera it's day and night compared to the Nebula Nano the Nebula Nano is the camera you're gonna get on the 95x version 3 and I really hope beta FPV and other brands who sell drones with the Nebula Nano are gonna change for the Nebula Nebula Pro in the future because the Nebula Pro is a really huge update even if they change the firmware on the Nebula Nano so the quality is a bit better now but it's still not that good so yeah I really hope all the brands are gonna change for the Nebula Pro. The Nebula Pro is compatible with the air unit so if you want to put it on the air unit you can but for me it makes no sense because it's gonna change nothing because if you already have the air unit it's more heavy than a Vista, I think this is better for Vista users. The lens is exactly the same as the Air Unit. The only difference between the Nebula Pro and the Air Unit camera is that on the Air Unit camera, the colors look more punchy and also it's a little bit more sharp on the Air Unit camera. But you know, when you're flying, you're not focusing on the sharpness of your image. So it's perfect. It's also more smaller and more lighter than the Air Unit camera. And now the best things on it is that you can finally choose between 16 by 9 and 4 by 3 aspect ratio in your goggles, which was not the case with the Nebula Nano. On the Nebula Nano, you can only have 16 by 9. And I'm used to fly in 4 by 3 aspect ratio, so I'm really happy to have that. And also you can choose between low latency mode or high quality mode, which was not available on the Nebula Nano. Now let's see some images comparison. And the major difference for me about the Nebula Pro is that now is the end of this harsh difference between highlight and shadows. And here is a footage from the Nebula Pro, which is so much better. And here it is the Air Unit and the Nebula Pro. As you can see, you can tell the difference between them. But between the Nebula Nano and the other cameras, you can clearly see the difference. In conclusion, if you have the Nebula Nano, guys, go to buy the Nebula Pro because it's clearly much better. And for this type of tiny drone, it's clearly better to have this than the original Vista camera, which is more bigger. Thanks Cadix for this because it's clearly, clearly much better than the Nebula Nano. By the way, if you want to change the Nebula Nano who is included with the drone for the Nebula Pro or the Air Unit camera, you will need to use the over TPU mount for the FPV camera who is included inside the box, like I said, at the beginning it's a 20 millimeters TPU mount for FPV camera and it's made for bigger cameras so you guys at Beta FPV already know that we're gonna change this camera so please include it for the future drone thank you and now ladies and gentlemen it's time to talk about the masterpiece of this setup which is the SMO 4k camera this new camera from Beta FPV and Insta360 it's a naked version of the 1R with the 4k modules let's talk about it because the 95X version 3 is made to work with this camera. So let's see what's inside the box, how it works and what I think about it. When you open the box, you're gonna directly see the SMO 4K camera ready to go. On top of it, you can find a back case in replacement in case you break the first one. But here I have a problem because they give us this back case in spare for the SMO 4K but there is nothing here to put the screw on the drone. On this box they say ultralight camera for FPV drones so I don't know the point because if I put this case in the back of the camera I can't use it on my drone so I don't know the point of this but uh, 
you have this in the box then as you can see they included two different filters which is awesome thank you better fpv for this so you have one nd16 and one uv filters under the plastic you can find two sh1.0 four pin power cable they are made to work with the smo so if you want to put the smo on a cine whoop, for example you will need to solder this cable to make it works but i would love to have also the adapter for naked gopro some of you guys don't want to buy the drone and just want to buy the camera maybe to put it on the cine whoop, five inch or whatever if you already have a naked gopro you will need to remove the cable that you already have and put the one for the smo but you don't have this adapter for your naked gopro it's included inside the drone package so why not inside the smo package so yeah better fpv if you can add that in your package it can be great for everyone after that you can find one screwdriver two spare screws for camera bottom cover one pack of camera mounting screws and nuts and one user manual so that's it for what's inside the smo 4k box and now let's see how it works it's really easy because you just need to put an sd card into the sd card slot just right here then connect the cable to power out the smo 4k put a battery on your drone connect it and then you have two different buttons here one to turn it on or off and the other one is to start recording and stop recording and then all you need to do to have a preview of what the camera is filming you need to connect the smo 4k to the phone app which is the insta360 app the same as the one r or the one x2 if you already have a one r camera you know how it's working but for those of you who didn't know let's see how it's work oh and the first time you're gonna connect the camera to your phone you will need to go to the wi-fi settings connect it to the smo 4k and then tap 88 as a password and then you come back to the app and it's okay after you will no need to do that again and for those of you who have done the 700 milliwatt hack on the vista i recommend you to put it back to 25 milliwatt if you plan to stay a bit of time inside the app with your drone connected without flying that way the cadix vista is not gonna burn maybe because when you do the 700 milliwatt hack the vista starts to be really hot really fast but if you just want to ride inside the phone app with your drone connected put it back to 25 milliwatts it's much better and when it's connected you can have a preview of what the drone is seeing then you have different options you can click here then you have all the different options personally i'm shooting in standard because hda or time lapse or time shift i don't know the use with a drone but it's fine then you have the different resolutions and here you have multiple choices personally i use 4k 30 4k 60 or even 2.7k at 100 fps if you want to do really nice slow motions and i am always shooting in 16 by 9 aspect ratio because i use the stabilization from this phone app or via the insta studio app on my laptop and personally i use mostly the insta studio app because it's much better to export your footage we will talk about that after then you can change the angle of the camera you have ultra wide wide linear narrow but i use ultra wide always then you have different color profile personally i use log vivid or standard i prefer log to be honest for the dynamic range is much better in log i did some tests and i found out log is better and by the way you can find some LUTs especially made for the 1R for this you just need to go into the website of insta360 go to the download section then select the 1R go down and here you can find LUTs you can download the package inside this folder you're gonna find some LUTs for the 1R or the 1X select the 1R and just choose the LUT for the 4K module I do my color grade by myself but just in case guys that way you know that you can find the LUT here if you want to edit your footage on your laptop after those settings you can find the settings for the exposure you can leave it in auto you can change the white balance you can also put it in manual those are my settings in manual but when i'm in manual i use filters all the time most of the time i use a filter and then i leave it in auto i just lock my white balance and that's it almost all the footage during the intro was shot in auto with just the white balance locked and it was great in my opinion and i'm shooting like this because you can set a minimum and maximum iso like on a gopro for example but i really don't understand this because if you have the one hour with the one inch module you can set the max iso so it starts from 100 to 400 if you set your max iso to 400 and here we don't have this option so i would love to 
have this available if they can add it in the next firmware update it can be really really great because with this type of drone we like to fly inside forest for example then go up to the trees with the sky in the background and if you lock your ISO to 100 when you're gonna fly high with the sky in background it's gonna be nicely exposed but when you go down to the forest it's gonna be completely dark I would love to have this option and that's why for now I'm just put a filter and then I'm leaving all the settings to auto except the white balance that I locked of course for the filters you have different options of course you have those filters included inside the SMO box which is a UV filter and an ND16 filter but like I said sometimes depend of the weather you don't need to use an ND16 it's too strong so it's good to have an ND8 or an ND4 or even 32 if it's really bright for this you can use those filter for the Mavic 2 zoom from Freewell and I want to thank them for sending me this pack of six filter you have an ND4 8 16 a CPU filter and then the 32 pl and 64 pl which is perfect for all conditions they fit on the smo but the thing is that on the mavic 2 zoom you need to screw the filter and with the smo it's not the case you just need to push the filter on it and it works i never lose a filter when flying but because of the mavic 2 zoom filters have those lines i don't know the term in english when you push them inside it's gonna damage the plastic around the lens so yeah it's a bit of a downside but it's not the fault of free well, they are made for Mavic 2 Zoom. They fit and they are working perfectly on the SMO, so it's your choice. Personally, I don't care to damage the plastic around the lens if I can shoot properly, so it's your choice, guys. But I would love Beta FPV to make more range of filter for the camera, that way we have the choice. Let's talk about the image quality now, and to be honest, it's really good. The dynamic range is crazy good because I was shooting in auto. As you can see here, the ground looks really nicely exposed, and the foreground too. I found that with the GoPro for example when you're flying like that between trees the ground is nicely exposed but the sky is generally overexposed it depends but the dynamic range is crazy crazy good on this camera but there is some things who need to be fixed the first point is the sharpness I found that the image looks too sharp in my taste I already said that on my one hour review but yeah I would love to have the option in camera to choose between low medium or high like on the GoPro if they can add that in a firmware update it can be really really good the second point is that even in auto setting or manual setting with everything locked I had this kind of flickering effect or exposure changes I don't know how to call that but as you can see here if you watch the rocks you can see this cut of exposure or flickering I don't know what is this exactly but even when all your settings are locked you're gonna have this I think it's a point that they really need to fix except that for the image quality I found the image looks really really great and sharp all the image in general is more sharp than on my GoPro Hero 6 Black for example but those problems makes me going back to use this camera for commercial work for example when you do a commercial work you want the shot to be perfect but other than that the quality is really really good and like I said the dynamic range is crazy good compared to a GoPro now the point where you were waiting for is the stabilization and I'm sure you guys are really curious to see how it's looking compared to real steady with the GoPro and here it's the same they need to work on it because it's great if you're flying really smoothly but if you make some hard turn or you're going up or down really fast you're gonna see some vibration and some hard turns as you can see on those images so they really need to work on the stabilizations because it's not that great and there is something that I don't know why but when you edit your footage and you want to export them via your phone you can't add the FPV stabilization which is better than the flow state stabilization alone you can do that via the Insta360 Studio software on your laptop and to be honest is the only way that I stabilize my footage because via your phone it's great for sharing on Instagram or quick stories or things like that we will talk about how to edit your footage via your phone and via the Insta Studio software after but yeah I don't know why because when you use the Insta360 Go for example you have a dedicated app for the Insta360 Go and on it you can add the FPV stabilization so <laughs> why we don't have it here and even if you want to just put that in your story we want the best results so FPV stabilization via the Insta360 Studio software is insane. You have no distortions, you don't have that really wide 
angle like on real steady which is a really good point because now it's look like you have a real camera on your quad which is an insane look and to be honest i really prefer the look of this than real steady but they need to fix those hard turns problems and kind of vibrations they are small the vibrations are small but you can see it and for the turns <laughs> You can clearly see the hard turn so yeah it's not good they really need to fix that now let's talk about editing and how to export your footage and share them on social media or to edit them on your favorite software personally i use the phone app to export and share my footage on instagram stories and the studio app on my laptop to work on bigger projects for the phone app what i recommend you to do is to turn on your drone to have access to the footage who are inside the SD card then select the footage that you want here you can change the camera angle of your footage you can change the beginning or the end you can change the speed or make some kind of speed ramp add music you can add some filters and some of them looks great to be honest and you can even change the exposure the contrast etc of your footage so it's really great the only downside here is that we don't have the choice to change the aspect ratio for example for stories and with the insta 361r with the 360 module and even with the one inch i'm not sure about that but you can choose the aspect ratio for stories square landscape things like that and here you can't when you're ready you can click on the three dots on the top right and here you can even add a LUT if you have shot in log and you can add or remove the stabilization so keep it on if you go down you can undo all the modifications that you did and then you can just click to export and here you can reduce noise or add color plus and then you can click to custom exports so here you can change the resolution so if it's for Instagram, this one is perfect. That's it for the phone app. The only thing who is missing here is the different aspect ratio for Instagram, stories, square, landscape, things like that. This option is perfect. Being able to edit your footage directly via your phone, it's really good when you are on the go and you want to share some stories of what you're doing with your quad. It's really great. But please just add this option for the aspect ratio. Let's see the workflow with Insta Studio software now on your laptop. What you need to do is to export your footage from your SD card and you can see different files just use the ProVid files the other files like LR files are lower resolution files I guess so just import the ProVid files into the Insta Studio software when you have them inside select the one that you want select the beginning the end add the FPV stabilization which is the best for FPV footage of course and then you can export your footage and what I'm doing is I always choose to export my footage in ProRes which is the highest resolution when you want to work on your footage uh, into your editing software I recommend you to do that even if you need a, maybe a powerful laptop but to be honest I prefer to export in ProRes and then work with proxy files into my editing software because the quality is really the highest as possible so I recommend you to do that now let's see the things that I like and what I don't like about this combo let's start with the thing that I like the first one is the new design of the quad it looks so much better so much more finished compared to the v2 if you look at both side by side you can see that the v2 looks really more like a homemade quad than a really finished quad and the v3 looks really more polished more finished it's so much better the design is clearly a next level compared to the v2 i also enjoy the perfect tune of the quad when you receive it like this it's a bnf so it flies perfectly you don't have to change anything it's also really more powerful so it's a good thing like the v2 it's really small so it's perfect for beginners or even for me i really enjoyed flying it in small areas it's a thing that i really like about those beta 95x is that they are really small and you can go through insane gaps so yeah it's really nice and if you're beginners i highly recommend you this combo if you want to start you can buy it like that with the smo you can buy the drone and the smo and it gives you the perfect combo you don't need to make a gopro a naked gopro like before because you can't buy a naked gopro you need to do it by yourself and it's a bit scary when you never did that before it's a thing that i like and the workflow with the camera is really easy so it can be perfect for everyone it's it's a thing that i really enjoy also i really enjoy that they 
have included some filters inside the package with the camera, it's really great. The image quality, even if there is some things to fix, but generally the image quality is really, really nice. I like the fact that you can shoot in 4K 60 or in 2.7K 100 fps it's crazy great if you want to make slow motions with your drone the drone itself is also a lot more protected and it's something that i really like to not see the wires everywhere and things like that it's a really good point compared to the v2 i really enjoyed that you can edit the footage directly on your phone and share them on instagram really really nice to have this option now the things that i don't like and this is mostly for <laughs> insta360 because beta fpv just made the naked version of the one r but all those problems are for insta360 so insta360 please first work on this stabilization because it's far from real steady for now it's great if you're flying really smoothly but other than that <laughs> It's not that good. The second point is this kind of flickering effect or exposure changes. I don't know how to call that, but for me, the stabilization and this problem are the most important to fix now. Also, I don't like the fact that you can set a minimum and a maximum ISO or just a maximum ISO, but I really want to have this option in the future. I also don't really like to not have the FPV stabilization and the different aspect ratio inside the phone app. I think it's really important for us if we want to share footage for Instagram, it's really important to have those options. So waiting for it. But like I said, I'm pretty sure that they can fix that in a future firmware update. So after that, this camera is gonna be <laughs> so good the price of the drone if you're using the dji remote controller is 279.99 dollars if you're like me and you're using another controller with a crossfire it's 304.99 dollars the smo 4k camera is 239.99 dollars my final thoughts about this combo is that i have nothing to complain about the 95x version 3 for me it's a massive update compared to the v2 in terms of design it's more powerful everything is so much more protected you have access to all the parts really easily everything is almost plug and play so it's really perfect i really love it for the smo 4k it's a different thoughts and like i said i'm sure they can fix that with a firmware update i like it i like the option that this camera gives to you and all the possibilities that you can do with the phone app etc but in terms of quality it's great but these two problems for the stabilization and for the flickering or exposure changes i don't know what is this exactly but these two major problems need to be fixed because other than that i will not use it for commercial work and i would love to because the dynamic range is crazy and the overall image quality is great but those problems are a real downside for me and i can't just shoot and say okay i will see after no when you do a commercial work you need to be sure of your gear of your results after shooting i hope i really hope they're gonna fix that because it can clearly beat the gopro if they fix those problems this is my thoughts about the smo 4k and i really hope they are gonna listen to me and after that i will use it every time for sure because the dynamic range like i said is crazy and the overall quality it is great so oh my gosh this video was quite long right i just wanted to make an in-depth review and tell you all i saw during testing this drone and this camera so i hope you guys have enjoyed this thanks for watching don't forget to give a thumbs up if you liked the video subscribe to support my channel and hit that bell to receive a notification for my next video i wish you guys all the best for this new year and i see you soon salut